This is Mark Hubs with Aeros Gone Bullet Modes. Today we're going to talk about making cartridges for the Colt's Dragoon Revolver. If you remember an earlier video I did, we talked about those early cartridges for the Walker Colt. This is the next generation cartridge that was used for the Dragoon and also the early Model 1860 Army. We'll go through the steps of making these cartridges, how to construct them, and also show you how they're actually loaded into the revolver. Stay tuned. In my last video, uh, we discussed how to produce the early U.S. Army cartridges for the Walker revolver and the early Dragoon revolvers. And this was uh, done in a uh, result of the faultiness of the powder flask that was done at the time. It couldn't produce a, a consistent charge. This is simply a round ball that's wrapped in tissue paper. And then the tissue paper is captured inside the end of the cartridge body. And then it's filled with powder and it's uh, folded at the end. And to load this, the soldier had to bite the end of the cartridge off, pour the powder into the chamber, extract the ball and unwrap it, and put it into the chamber and load it. These were the norm for uh, several years, from about 1850 up to 1855, until a new cartridge came out, first made at the St. Louis Arsenal. And this had a conical bullet inside. This is for the Dragoon, of course. And it was produced almost exactly like uh, the U.S. Army 55 caliber rifled musket cartridge as far as its components. It's just scaled down to the 44 caliber. And this is based on uh, the U.S. Ordnance Manual. And then this drawing uh, that is, can be found in uh, Dean Thomas's Brown Ball to Rimfire Volume 3. I'll try to post this somewhere uh, so you can see it. And General John Pittman, after the end of the war, uh, documented several different types of ammunition and he took these cartridges apart and he measured every component of it both in size and weight uh, and did some great drawings of how they were constructed and I also know that uh, this pretty much matches uh, the dimensions that come out in the ordnance manual although the ordnance manual says 30 grains this one says 25 and I think that became the norm after the Model 1860 Army uh, came into service fully. You have to remember the first year of the war there were very few Model 1860s available. Uh, it was the, the Dragoon that was still the 44, the main 44 caliber revolver. To make these I produced a set of templates out of a file for, folder cut to the dimensions that Mr. or that General uh, Pittman provided and I used these to cut my papers. Uh, the outer wrapper and the cylinder wrapper are very thin masking paper. Uh, and you can buy rolls of this at Home, Home Depot or Lowe's very inexpensively. When you have one roll, it's going to last you for a thousand cartridges. The uh, powder chamber or the cylinder on the inside is heavier paper. And I cut this from a uh, grocery sack. It's about twice as heavy as the masking paper. The first step in making this is to create the powder chamber in the, on the inside, or it's called the cylinder, and it's made out of the heavier paper, and it's got the wrapper off over it. And we'll do this using a dowel rod that I have turned down uh, to about 45 caliber. It started as a, a half inch dowel rod, and I took the diameter down uh, to get what I needed for, for this particular cartridge. This is the heavy paper, and that will be the cylinder and this is called the cylinder wrapper and it's also the th it's a thin paper that, that matches the uh, the outer wrapper which we'll use in a minute and we'll place the uh, cylinder on top of the wrapper and we'll leave the long edge open you can see it doesn't uh, it's not quite as wide as the long edge and then we will take our dowel rod and lay it on top of it at the same height as the thick paper. And we'll roll it toward the slanted end, again, keeping the 
long edge at the top. That'll help keep it closed once we uh, crimp it. Now we're going to push down the ends. And I'm going to take a drop of glue. It doesn't take much. And they would have used uh, some kind of starch based paste at the time. Make sure it's good and flat. And remember the bullet will set on top of that inside the cartridge and the powder chamber will stiffen the sides of the cartridge and it will also keep the powder off of the lubricated bullet because we don't want uh, powder stuck to the outside of that projectile. And once it's formed, we'll take it off. And then you can make several of these and set them aside to dry. And let's do another one. Outer wrapper. Powder chamber. Just the heavier paper. And then, it's sort of hard to do this and keep my fingers out of the way so you can see what's going on. slanted in, making sure that the long end of the outer wrapper is at the top. You see there's a, there's a long end. If you, if you do it in reverse, then it'll try to unwrap itself. Uh, if the long end is pressed in and crimped, then it tends to uh, stay, to better, to stay together much better. There's our drop of glue. press it down. You can even grind it on, on the flat surface a little bit if you need to. And that creates our powder chamber or our cylinder as they were called. And again we'll take that off and we'll let it dry. Let me tell you a little bit about our setup here. Um, I've used just a, a piece of uh, scrap lumber. This is a piece of 2 by 8 and I've drilled some holes in the appropriate places. It's actually a little warped. Uh, good place to set up my dowel rod so I can tie. This is a, a choking cord and this will be used to do the initial choking on a cartridge before I tie it and you'll see why that's important in a few minutes. And this is not something that, that I dreamed up. This is uh, something they used during the period uh, to do these cartridges. And remember these are all these cartridges were all made by hand in the arsenals typically by boys and women and girls. Uh, the idea of Rosie the Riveter was not new uh, in World War II. It was Rosie the cartridge maker uh, before, even before the Civil War. I'm using some unbleached uh, linen thread to do my tying. And uh, any type of uh, natural thread will work. You could use cotton kite string if you choose, but. I always prefer to use what they use. That's what the, uh, they would have used a, a linen based. You can use cotton though. Just don't use rayon <laughs> or something like that. And uh, the next step will be to take one of our powder chambers and we'll put it back on the dowel rod and then take a lubricated bullet. Well, first of all, let's lay out our, our cartridge paper. The long end is the end that's going to be tied and the short end uh, is the end that will be folded and torn uh, when, it's, when you go to load your revolver. And you always roll on your uh, dowel rod toward the slanted end. So just keep those in mind. We'll take a bullet and this is our Johnston and Dow bullet. Uh, these actually had not been developed in 1855. It was really a, uh, a longer bullet that had a much shorter heel. Uh, the, the original Dragoons could take that type of bullet. Unfortunately, almost all the reproduction 44s now, the loading area is not nearly as large as it was originally. And most of the original bullet designs will not fit in reproduction revolvers as, as a result. Uh, the Johnson and Dow, I picked that to reproduce because it will fit in most of the reproduction revolvers because the long heel allows it to fit deep into the chamber so it clears that loading gate uh, much better. But we'll take the uh, lubricated bullet, and these would have been uh, 
uh, dipped in grease right up above the, uh, at the bottom of the ogive probably, in pans of grease, and, and then uh, allowed to congeal and they were pulled out and ready to go into the cartridges. And then I'm gonna make one concession, a modern concession. I'm gonna use a glue stick and I'm gonna run a very thin bead of glue up along that one edge there. Those weren't originally glued, but uh, it really makes the, the cartridge tighten up better and look better and hold together better. And I'll, I'd like to make that one concession because they will try to come apart while you're tying them. And hopefully I can do this where you can see what I'm doing. And the bullet's going to be about a half inch down inside the cartridge tube. And I'm not sure if you can see it in there. About a half inch. And then I'm going to take my choking cord, wrap it around one time, and then I'm going to pull, and I'll put my finger over it also to help steady it, give it a tug, and now it's ready to tie off. And I'll use my linen thread. I'll wrap it around twice. Tighten it up. And then give it two half inches. And then press down the tail a little bit and clip off the excess. And then be careful because the powder chamber will want to come back out with you. If it does, just put it back in. Edge it back down. You'll, you'll feel it stop when it gets down to the uh, top of the bullet. And then uh, my powder flask has a 15 grain charger. I'll give it two charges for a total of, of uh, 30 grains. And you can weigh them, and I do weigh uh, some cartridges. I think from this situation, uh, this is pretty close, 30 grains. And then we have to, to uh, take the cartridge and flatten it and fold it. You'll see the seam there. We want to flatten the seam edge, or the seam side, I should say. So I'll crimp that down with your fingers and then bend it over 90 degrees and then turn each end in about a quarter of the way in. This is just like uh, the tails on the cartridges I did in a, in a previous video, the round ball version. Yeah. And then back on top of itself, crimp it again. And then you can do another crimp if you choose to, just so it'll lay flatter if you go to bundle these. So that's your completed cartridge. As you can see, the tail's not nearly as long on the round ball version because we've used so much more of the paper on the inside, uh, the length of the bullet and so forth. And these would have been bundled uh, together with six cartridges and then an empty tube, one of these outer tubes, tied uh, on one end and then with seven, seven or eight percussion caps inside that and then the end twisted and the six cartridges and the percussion cap tube will have been bundled together in brown paper very similar to this and then tied on the outside with linen thread and that's how they were issued to the soldiers. I'm going to show you how the cartridges were actually loaded into the revolver. Unlike the combustible cartridges that we'll find in another generation, these were all uh, basically torn apart to be loaded into the gun. Soldier first bit off the tail of the cartridge, spit out the tail, exposing the powder where he could pour it, the pre-measured charge, into the chamber. And then the bullet was squeezed out with the paper or unwrapped, however he chose to do it. This is sort of difficult to do and also not cover up the action so you can see what I'm doing. 
and then the bullet was placed into the chamber, rotated under the loading lever, and then rammed home. And of course that was repeated six times. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. Please visit the Air is Gone Bullet Modes website and you can learn more about the modes that we offer for various Civil War era black powder weapons. Safe shooting!